What is up guys, DZ here, and today we are finally talking about Jack Atlas. I know this has been one of the most highly requested 5Ds characters, and we're going to talk about his cards in today's video. Now how this series works is that we look at the cards a character played in the anime, and we talk about them in terms of how good they were in the TCG at real life tournaments. Now with 5Ds characters, it's always a little bit hard because they had a bunch of speed spells which obviously never saw play in the TCG because we don't have speed world in our format and they played a bunch of really weird trap cards that are only good in specific situations so talking about 5d's characters can be kind of tough but luckily Jack Atlas did play a number of cards that saw play in the TCG I also want to shout out team samurai x1's shop he is running a big sale right now that ends this Monday. He has like sales on almost all of the items in his shop and also we have a 5% off code. So if you use code DZ5 with a capital D you will get 5% off of your order on top of the already crazy sales and a portion of your sale will go right back into the channel so it's a way to support the channel while getting stuff for a pretty good discount. I will put a link to Sam's shop in the description below. I might as well start today's video by talking about the Ace monster of Jack Atlas, Red Dragon Archfiend. This card might not look super scary nowadays by modern standards, but back in 2008, Red Dragon Archfiend was a real powerhouse. It was one of the very first synchro monsters ever introduced into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. This is a level 8 dark dragon synchro effect monster with 3,000 attack and 2,000 defense. It takes one tuner plus one or more non-tuner monsters, which means means it's completely generic and it says after damage calculation if this card attacks a defense position monster your opponent controls destroy all defense position monsters your opponent controls during your end phase destroy all other monsters you control that did not declare an attack this turn this card must be face up on the field to activate and to resolve this effect so red dragon archfiend was a pretty great way to push through a big defensive board that your opponent might have managed to set up and keep in mind back in 2008 defense position monsters were a lot more popular than they are nowadays back then a lot of people played cards that you would want to set that had good flip effects for example so red dragon archfiend was a great way to destroy a whole bunch of those and if you're destroying face down monsters it'll avoid triggering their flip effects so red dragon archfiend was a great monster and also it had a ton of attack points which definitely mattered back in 2008 so red dragon archfiend had has gotten upgrades throughout the years and you could play those if you want to but the original was a great card back in older tournaments next up released in 2010 we have battle fader this card was great a long time ago by this point in Yu-Gi-Oh's history we already had gores the emissary of darkness and tragodia now gores and tragodia were great cards and they still saw play even after battle fader was released but battle fader definitely had had some unique advantages. This is a level 1 dark fiend effect monster with zero attack and zero defense. It says when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack, you can special summon this card from your hand, then end the battle phase. If summoned this way, banish it when it leaves the field. So what makes this card so different from Gores and Trigodia? Well, one thing that really is important with Battle Fader is that you don't have to take any damage to use its effect. With with Gores and Trigodia, you'll be taking some amount of damage before you can summon them, but with Battle Fader, that's not the case. So Battle Fader definitely is a lot better when you are at lower life points than Gores or Trigodia. Just like in the case of Gores and Trigodia, Battle Fader does put a monster on the board so that next turn you can use it for a Tribute Summon or a Synchro Summon or whatever. So Battle Fader was a great card in a lot of decks, and it had some unique advantages over Gores Gores and Trigodia, which were very popular in that time period. Absolute Power Force was a big set for fans of Jack Atlas. Not only did it have Battle Fader, 
but it also had Fiendish Chain. Fiendish Chain is a continuous trap card that says, activate this card by targeting one effect monster on the field, negate the effects of that face-up monster while it is on the field, also that face-up monster cannot attack. When it is destroyed, destroy this card. So not only did it lock down the monster's effect, but also prevented it from attacking, and that could buy you a lot of turns. These days we don't see a lot of Fiendish Chain, it's been power crept by more recently released trap cards, however I want to say here that the impact of Fiendish Chain on the metagame was huge once priority went away and it remained a staple trap card for a lot of control decks for many years to come. And I was very excited in May and June of 2012 when Fiendish Chain finally got two back to back common reprints which made the card a lot more affordable for budget players, myself included. So Fiendish Chain might not be around these days, but it definitely had a huge impact on Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole. Jack Atlas also played Trap Eater, a very strange looking level 4 tuner monster. This is a dark Fiend Tuner Monster with 1900 attack points and 1600 defense. It says cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned by sending one face up trap card your opponent controls to the graveyard, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. I'm not super surprised that Trap Eater doesn't see a ton of play in modern Yu Gi Oh!, but honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if it did come back as a side deck choice someday in the future. Trap Eater not only deals with an opponent's floodgate, which is obviously very good, but also it puts a body on the board, and level 4 tuners are pretty good tuners. So Trap Eater can then be used for a synchro summon, or honestly you could just use it to attack over an opponent's monster, it does have 1900 attack points. For a while, Trap Eater sort of came in and out of the metagame as a side deck option. We usually didn't see it as a main deck card, it was a little bit too specific for that, but it was a pretty good side deck card for many years. It's probably been power crept by more recent releases like Twin Twisters and Lightning Storm and stuff like that, but I honestly feel like it could see play in the future if people really want a card that not only gets rid of a floodgate, but also puts a level 4 tuner on the board. And finally, we'll end today's video on Exploder Dragon Wing, a very cool looking card. I love this card's artwork, and also it looks great as an ultimate rare. Exploder Dragon Wing is a level 7 dark dragon synchro monster with 2400 attack and 1600 defense. This card was originally printed in Raging Battle back in 2009 as an ultra and ultimate rare card. It actually didn't see a reprint until many years later in 2014 and it was pretty expensive up until that reprint. It was a very nice collector's card. Exploder Dragon Wing takes one tuner plus one or more non-tuner dragon type monsters so you pretty much have to play this card in a dedicated dragon deck. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles a monster, you can destroy that monster and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack the destroyed monster had on the field. This card's attack must be greater than or equal to the attack of that monster to activate and to resolve this effect. So basically, you got to destroy a monster and do a bit of damage to your opponent. Not the craziest effect, but it was pretty good in decks that could summon it, and if this card would have been generic, it probably would have seen a lot more play. But even as a synchro monster that required a non-tuner dragon type monster to summon, it was a pretty popular card in any deck that could make it. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to check out Team Samurai's shop, it'll be in the description below, and use promo code DZ5 for 5% off of your order. I'll see you guys later, thank you so much for watching, goodbye.